I tried to hit it at exactly 8 o'clock this time. I don't know if it succeeded or not. All right, good morning, gang. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Testing, one, two, three, looks good. Video looks good. One camera, two cameras, three cameras, audio. Okay, over to the mods on this one. I have no idea if that's going to work or not, how you turn it on or how you turn it off. I don't know. For those who aren't seeing anything, we have installed a, a module that will produce uh, closed captions. There's been a request for this, and it seems to be possible. But at this end, I can't see it. I don't know what's going on. And uh, I don't know how to turn it off or to turn it on. So it is controllable at that end. Okay, good, 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 good. Whatever, over you. Let me know if there's something. There's a huge control panel for it. I can set the number of lines, one, two, three lines, line breaks. There's all kinds of settings here. I have no idea. Just uh, whatever. I'll need your feedback later on. Okay, let's get things rolling here. We have some actual physical work going on here today. It's been way too long. Today we are actually going to use some tools, including everybody's favorite. We have some physical work to do today. It's been far too long since I've actually had some real, real work to do. But as always, before we get to that, I've got to clean up the crap. Oh, this is going to Watanabe-san. We all know what this is. Watanabe-san's off for the weekend now, but uh, on Monday morning when she gets back, this will be on her desk waiting for her. Those who know, know what that is. It, oh, this is back from one of our other printers. I need to put embossing on it. I'm not going to be doing that today. We can't have time for that today. This is back from Mitamura-san, who is our 11th printer now. We have 11 printers that we are feeding with work. You've seen him. He's the guy that did the rain print, the print where we carved the extra block for the rain. He's a person that I didn't really want to think about working with because he's one of the established printers downtown. And my experience with working with those guys has been really not good. We've talked about this before. He wanted work. Let's try. He wanted work. Let's try. And this guy has come around. He's come around to the sort of Mokohankan way of doing things. And he is producing very 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 nice work for us i am totally completely happy with this i have no problem with sending this through to jed for signing his name is mitamuru tsutomu i say he's one of the old guys actually he's younger than me but whatever we don't need to go into those kind of conversations he's a really nice guy his dad used to be the you know, kaicho san kumicho san the, the the leader of the craftsman's association <laughs> How does the CC handle Mokohankan? Mokohankan, I don't know. <laughs> I imagine you're going to find that fairly entertaining. I have no idea. No idea, no idea, no idea. And as I said, we got work to do today. We have a show and tell. We have lots of show and tell. I have show and tell for how many days I can't even count how many days coming up. When we do the show and tell, we will do a quick recap of a mystery we had in the previous show and tell, and then we will move on to the new item. We're going back to the Meiji time for today's show and tell. And this one, this arrived. We won't look at this today. This is a tease. This is a 100% tease. This is a show and tell coming up sometime next week. There's no way I can get to it today. Hundred percent teasing here. I'm sorry. Trolling, teasing, whatever word you want to use, pranking. Incredible. Absolutely incredible, but not today. I haven't even seen all the way to the end. It's 14 meters, and I haven't seen past the first few meters, whatever. Anyway, let's get to the work. Paper is out for one person, Ishikawa-san. She's already up there. She comes usually long before the stream starts. She's doing test printing this morning. Is Taran-san watching? Ishikawa-san is test printing your cormorant fishing picture this morning. He's been doing that. My mic is right in front of me on the, on the, right here, I can touch it, dip, 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 dip. The mic is right in front of me. I didn't pin it to my chest. People keep telling me it over, over. The mic is right there. I can clip it on if you want, but I heard that it, you know, that mic isn't working. Well, yes it is, supposedly. Mic auxiliary, let me look at the settings, one sec. Properties, device, 
I see, I see, I see, I see. It's plugged in. Testing now. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let me tap it again. Tap, tap, tap. Are we okay? People are telling me it's okay. Don't pin to chest, pin to beard. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it alone. Okay. Okay, the work I have today, it's work I hadn't planned on. I had lots of other work to do today. This is not what I had planned on doing, but we have a semi, I can say emergency. It's not an emergency, but it's another job has come up. We are out of these. Jed ordered from us a bunch of the meteoric power prints. This was in the second round of the Kickstarter uh, in 20 whatever. 2017 or something and they they're doing really really well anyway we are out we are out of uh, we are out of them jed took the last batch we had and we need to reprint so i sent the blocks up to aimi san upstairs for reprinting the previous batch was done by suga san and with this batch i sent to aimi san and she brought me back down her first proof sheet off the blocks and she says dave we have a problem and we do have a problem and uh, here's the first proof sheet, not proof sheet, the first test sheet she printed from the block. It's, you know, as you can see, whatever, a print like this, of course, there's many blocks. The black part is his face. This guy's hair is not black, so there's a complete space where the hair will come later. Anyway, this is the key block. And she said, this is the first sheet off and she's already in trouble. And she is. There are traces here of pigment, black pigment, in many places around the block here and she brought me the block to show me why and yeah i remember now i remember this is one of the first prints that chon san did for us a number of years ago and he and i have been wrestling with how to carve not how to carve but what kind of sort of style and what kind of procedure to use he wants to take as his pattern the old Meiji era blocks. The old Meiji era carving. He wants to carve like they did in the old days. And that's really cool. So do I. We want to carve as interesting and beautiful as the old days. But there are a few differences between the old days and now. The old Meiji era blocks that we see are carved sort of like you see here. Very shallow. The areas that are not used for carving, for printing, are kind of shallow. Modern people go quite a bit deeper. Dave here, when he's carving, well, this isn't mine, this is Kawasaki-san, but whatever. This is quite a bit deeper. After you come off the printed area, you go down quite a ways. Johnson doesn't want to do this. He wants to do it like the old guys did. It's a question of pride, and it's also better for printing. When it's shallow, the brush slides across the surface really smoothly. When there's many deep holes, the hairs go down in the holes and it bangs on the resulting line and it's difficult for the printer to print. You get a lot more tamari along the lines. So it's quote better if it's shallow. The problem is if it's too shallow, then of course, then your paper will sag in and touch and blot like it is on Ayumi san's print and the old paper the meiji era paper was smooth and clean and flat the printer could put the paper on slide the baron across and you're okay our modern paper and we've seen this many many times our modern paper has a really rough surface we put the paper on and we have to grind in more than the old guys did and because the paper has a rough surface, it tends to get pushed down farther than it used to in the old days. So, Johnson hasn't carved deeply enough here. Let me try and find a couple of places that show you exactly why. An ex oh, here, right there. There's one right there. Let me find it at the edge. Look, right there. That's the printing line. The paper comes across it, and he has left quite a vivid shoulder there. You can see it. That shoulder is going to cause trouble for the printers. Now, Sugusan making her look at this. It's oh my God, no, 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 no. Sugusan did her first batch, and what she must have done was she must have calendared her paper first to make it smooth, and then lightly printed it. And we sent them out to Kubota-san. 
Kabuddhasan printed this and look at this. Do you see this telltale mark here? The carver usually leaves a smooth surface in the areas that you don't need. But when the printer is sitting there at his bench and there's some wood extra here that's no good, the printer doesn't have carving tools. The printer just grabs a chisel and goes scoop, scoop, scoop. And what you can see here, these vivid lines, these trenches here, this is where Kubota-san has grabbed his chisel and said, that carver, and he has dug it out with a chisel by himself. And my job now today is to clean up this block ready for Ayumi-san to print it. And I don't remember specifically why I didn't do it when we had this print first made back in 27 or 2018. So you're going to see me today work with a few chisels here. I'm going to be mostly working with the ice ski chisel, cleaning away the corners, and somewhere around the edge here, to go along this edge, I'll be using our, our pounder, our, our persuader. It's only an issue now because it's Sano Ayumi-san printing it. The real top printer, Kobura-san, he got away with it. Suga-san must have really, really worked around it very hard. We don't want blocks that are difficult to print. We want blocks where we can put the paper down and print, print, print. And if she's already got smearing on her first sheet, then there's no way she can get through to 60 sheets. Because as the block absorbs moisture, those things raise and swell, and it just gets worse. And if she's having trouble on her first print, she did the right thing. She cut and ran, brought the block to me and said, Dave, I have a huge problem here. We have had a number of debates with the carver about this. <laughs> and he is a similar character to me. He's pretty, uh, he knows what he wants to do and uh, he wants to do it. As opposed to that, there's the guy here who signs the paychecks and we have this, you know, we have this discrepancy. The newer blocks John San has been doing for us are deeper. He has come around for the most part. His partner is a printer here, and she has told him clearly in no uncertain terms, look, what you're doing is making my life more difficult. She must have just grabbed him and said this, look, you and Dave can fight all you want, but you're making my life more difficult. Okay, let's find the spot here to get started. I am talking too much and not working enough. Let's start here. Let me get the location to get the camera set up. One sec. I'm gonna come in there. We're obviously gonna to have to check the light just a minute. Let me do this here one at a time. Get the spot first. We're gonna work in this area here to start with. And then how do we do this? Camera, height, light, check. Oops, that's wonderful. Too bright or too dark? Let's use the automatic, see what it does. Aha! This is what we get when we have light skin on a dark block. How are we going to do this? It's one or the other. Thanks, camera. <laughs> Someone's complaining about subtitles. There are subtitles. You can turn them off, I believe. We, we are putting in, we put in the plug-in at that request today. The subtitles can be turned off if you don't like them. I don't know how. chisel I haven't used in months. There we go. Okay, let me get a token bit of work done here. See you in a few minutes.
Yeah, what this should have been done long, long, long ago. Absolutely. Nanda Nanda. Probably the blocks got done, they went straight through to the printers. I never really had a chance to work with it, I guess. I don't remember. In my news feed this morning, I get, uh, I've get i got a custom news feed set up over, over on Google, of course. Most people, I'm sure you have this. You know, Google sends you news that uh, of topics that you're interested in. You know, So I've got a custom news feed set up. And I got a, a note last night uh, th through Google about Kickstarter activity. You know, we, we sort of generally watch what's going on in Kickstarter. We have no plans at the moment ourselves for any kind of Kickstarter campaign in, in the future. We're not planning anything like that right now at all. So I should perhaps turn that alert off, but it was on my computer. It came through last night. I guess most of you have seen this. It must be in the news all over the world, I guess. And somebody is writing some books and has a Kickstarter campaign, and it just set a record for the, the most, the biggest Kickstarter campaign ever. I didn't look any more details, but, there was, but that reminded me, you know, going back to 2012, 10, 10 years ago exactly, 2012, the summer, when our Kickstarter campaign... And we were in the same category. At the time, when the Ukyo Heroes first Kickstarter campaign ran, it was the biggest Kickstarter campaign ever that wasn't a movie. And we had, we held the world record at the time for, for biggest Kickstarter campaign with the proviso that it wasn't a movie. And it was exactly 10 years ago, this next, next summer, this coming August, so. We should have made t-shirts, you know, biggest Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that will ever be happening again because what's what's this guy hit today? What is it like a hundred million dollars or something? I didn't read the news. I don't know. But uh, Woodbuck Prince will never ever again be the largest Kickstarter campaign. I'm sure. But uh, it was a one-off, and it was early days for Kickstarter. And we were the right people in the right place at the right time, and uh, it was an incredible experience. That was quite the ride that month, August 2012. My God, that was quite the ride. We went from just, uh, you know, thinking, is this going to happen? You know, people are not going to buy this stuff, surely. You know. We knew the images were popular. And we knew that people would get the inkjet prints. You know, Jed was, we had a double campaign. It was for inkjet prints and woodblock prints. So we knew people would get the inkjet prints. That was a no-brainer. So the campaign was going to succeed. It was obvious. But the fear was that, you know, 99 people would order the inkjet print and one person would order the woodblock print and the campaign would thus succeed and we would have to make the woodblock prints, you know, seven woodblock prints for like one person. And, you know, it sounds like a joke now, but it was a real fear. We had no idea how many people would actually show interest in the stuff. It turned out, you know, long story short, it turned out okay, but we didn't know that when we started, you know. So that first day when it finally became obvious that people were going to do the woodblock prints, that was a huge relief. I look at the videos from that day and you can see the relief in my face. There had been this, you know, oh my God, oh my God, and then yay. And it wasn't a relief about getting tons of money. It was a relief about just getting through the thing, you know.
it's 2012. It was August of 2012. Yep. And when we opened the campaign, Jed opened it. He was the one who had this, his finger on the switch. And he opened it at a time when Japan was in the mid-afternoon. And myself and the ladies, you know, our, our business had really been struggling. We hadn't been going well. And we were pretty much ready to lay off the ladies who had been training with me, three or four of them. And we watched it from our afternoon. They were all here in the workshop over in Ome. And it was just, they just saw these numbers and like, they didn't really understand what a Kickstarter campaign was or what was going on. But the, the way that the, the control panel works is you've got your dashboard control panel open and as people join the campaign it updates in real time you don't have to reload the page there's ajax working and it's magic you can just see the number growing so you just sit there with the window in your browser open seeing the number of participants just jump up every five ten seconds An incredible experience Never have that again, I'm sure. These are the places that are dangerous. When there's a th an object coming down into an open space, and it's the area at the tip of this object that really, really is in danger of getting hit by the Baron. This one here. This one here, maybe I'll cut that a bit. So you can see kobota has cut this. There's a gouge here where kobota must have cut it. So it says where an object comes up into a wide area of open space, and this area right here, the, the shoulder. That's the most dangerous places. And they're right. Look, Kubota san has done this. He's sliced. You can see those slices. That's the printer hacking away at the block. And this is really dangerous, you know. He doesn't have carving tools or a microscope or anything. He just digs up and hacks. And if he slips, you're in big trouble. Big, big, big trouble. So every one of these strokes, I can see a curse. You know, he's just gone in here cursing you. Carve it round, 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 round. Right there. That's the dangerous place. Right there. Now, I shouldn't just sit and work around the place that kubota san has done, because obviously that's cleaned up. What I need to do now is get try and identify the places that are going to be trouble as we move forward. And as you saw on the little sheet that Aimi-san gave me, I've, I've lost it already. I don't know where it is. Here it is. She's having trouble here, and that's along this line. And there, yeah, I can feel it. It's too shallow, absolutely. This shoulder is too shallow. So I'm saying, do people in Japan curse a lot? I don't know, it depends on who your friends are. I don't know. The Japanese language, it isn't. It doesn't have like swear words that are, you're not supposed to use this words. When people are trying to swear or be upset or trying to be insulting, it's uh, you change your style of talking. And I'm not the guy to talk about this because I don't know that kind of speech well at all. We did have actually, it's funny you mentioned this because we had this experience yesterday. About five o'clock or something, Watanabe-san's getting ready to go home. I'm sitting here. I was trying to write the letter to Iwano-san about ordering the paper. I was having trouble concentrating because some guy outside, he was talking on the phone and he had happened to park himself right next to our Mario picture here. He'd been walking down the street, phoned his wife or somebody, it was his wife or his friend. I've got my sizing shirt on here. And he was talking on the phone really loud in our alcove here. And I'm trying to write a letter to Iwano-san and just this was like, so what do you do? The guy's a bit thoughtless. So I come to the front door and stand inside the front door like this, just looking at him thinking that that would give him the idea to, you know, and he would uh, nod and say, oh, okay, 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 and he would walk on. I stand there in front door. He looks over and sees me. Nom, 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 nom. He looks over and sees me, and he keeps going, and he keeps standing there. And he's 
talking to his wife and he's angry she's decided not to get the vaccine and he wants her to get the vaccine and they're arguing about this so and he doesn't quit so do I give up and come back and stop working while he stands there I waited and it went on five minutes seven eight ten minutes it just kept going on and I'm like okay I'm a foreigner let's escalate this a bit <laughs> so I open the door go outside and I stand on the other side of the alcove with my back to the wall and I just give him the stare I just sit there staring at it and what now I said she's like you we should not do this tape just just back off you you don't escalate problems in Japan you back off so but I said I'm a foreigner so I stood there and he hung in he just he didn't he just kept this conversation goes he just looked at me and with his eyes he said with his eyes and just stood there inside our genka. Now now I'm in a jam. I can't back off now because I've come up this far to do this. I can't that's, I can't touch the guy, push him. You don't, you know, no way. We're not gonna start a physical fight here. But I've escalated this time and I can't back off. And it went on five, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes. I gotta get back to work. I'm getting cold. I'm outside. <laughs> I, I'm regretting that I did this. <laughs> But what are you going to do? You can't back off. And what happened was she hung up on him eventually because the guy was over and over saying the same thing over and over and over again. And I was bored listening and everybody just, just, and funny, so he's talking. And he did the face thing and he looked, he jabbed something. And then without looking at me, he just walked away. So he, he won this little, this little whatever, very un-Japanese behavior on his part. When I came up, he should have, of course, I nodded, I'm sorry to have bothered you, and he should have walked down the street to, to somewhere where he wouldn't bother people, you know. So I did the, he did the wrong thing by staying there, and I did the wrong thing by, by semi-escalating it, and luckily it all ended. His wife put an end to it. <laughs> I, if she hadn't, I don't know where this would have gone, you know. Uh, I guess I haven't been here long enough. I am not Japanese. I never, ever will be Japanese, you know. Because I'm looking from straight down, I can't really see the problem areas here, but I can feel with my finger which spots are high. You know, there's a bump here, right there. There's a bump, and I can't see it from the top, but I can feel there's a there's a mound here. It's not too bad when there's something else nearby because the other side acts as a paper support. It's where the thing opens up, you know, that's the most dangerous, of course. Oh, right here, big one there, look at that. It's just a mound. These are dangerous too, outside here, just a second. 
very, very dangerous here. So if I get the angle right, you can perhaps see. These bumps, little bump, you can see them, one, two, three, these bumps, another one here, very dangerous. Especially, look at this one, you can see that's got to come off, absolutely. Paper will really flop on the edge. So someone's got a suggestion. If I had just asked the guy to leave, you know, maybe so. I thought, oh, again, in Japan, you know, the minimal level of escalation, just my presence there, I thought by coming to the window and looking at him, that gives him, that is, you know, asking with your body, would you please leave, you're bothering me. So I did sort of ask him to leave, not verbally, but in presence. And that's the point where if he was a normal Japanese, he should have nodded back at me and wandered off, you know, and he didn't. So I had to escalate. I didn't have to escalate it, but I did escalate it. So. Now we were both wrong here. He, he was wrong to, to be so intrusive, and I was wrong to escalate it. Doesn't matter. All done. So one oh, do I get some feedback? How is the captioning actually working? Is it like, is it working? The things that I say are being actually transcribed. The plugin that we've got here, the way it works is as I speak, it sends just the audio out to Google. Google has some kind of API that allows that, that does, you know, the translation that it uses on YouTube videos. I guess it's probably the same engine in the back. The audio is being sent out to Google comes back from Google in, in the form of, you know, these text things, and the, the plugin puts them into the stream. So it's happening in real time, not inside my computer, but out on the Google servers somewhere. Maybe here in Japan, maybe somewhere else, I don't know. Really, in real time as I speak, how is this possible, you know, how is this possible? The suggestion, by the way, the suggestion for these CCs came from Kodingami. He wrote to me yesterday, he said, Dave, some other stream he's on has them, can you look into it? When I first looked into it, I googled and said creative captions on Twitch. I went to the Twitch website and googled, and they have a facility. And they say here at Twitch, when we're doing major events, we offer creative, cr creative captioning, we offer closed captioning and Twitch does it with people typing. This is what it says on the Twitch website. It says we offer closed captioning and experts type as the panel members are speaking on this Twitch event, whatever. So I wrote back to Corin Gummy and said, look, Corin said, it's not going to happen. You know, I don't, I'm not going to hire people to, to type as I speak. But this morning he wrote back again and said, no, 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 no. Keep digging, keep digging. There's a plug in. And there was, I found the plug-in based on his recommendation. So Kodingami is responsible for this. So I wouldn't have thought it was possible. I really wouldn't have. It's happening almost simultaneously, but the data goes out somewhere to California. I don't even know. I know, I know intellectually how it happens, but I do not in any way, I do not in any way feel that I understand this.
there's another part to this you know after the printer like Kubota-san he dug in here with his chisel it's okay he cut off the tips the highest parts that were bothering him but he didn't uh, clean up after himself no he no nor should he have done and his chisel marks here and these chisel marks themselves will start to become a problem now down the road if I can find another one that he's done uh, I guess I've cleaned them up well the one just right here I'm working on when he scoops in with his U gouge it leaves it leaves a ridge and those ridges themselves now will start to pick up pigment so what I'm doing this morning here of course I'm cleaning off parts that are still a bit too high that he didn't touch but I'm also cleaning up now the not the damage that he did but I'm cleaning up the edge of his chisel marks because they will absolutely start to pick up pigment and with Mokohankan work, that's really not a huge problem. I know the the rough roughness of a chisel cut will pick up pigment, but bit by bit, and if it only comes into play when you're making like 200 to 300 copies. We don't let our printers run usually more than 60 or 70 for a major print like this. When we're doing postcard stuff, oh yeah, we'll run a couple of hundred with no problem. But prints like this, we will stop them at 60 or 70 to avoid block wear. So that's good from this point of view because it doesn't leave pigment. It doesn't, there's no time for the pigment to build up too much on these outside places. So that's another benefit from our system of keeping print runs low. Kabodasan just laughs at us. 60 prints. For him, he, it's not even worth getting his brush dirty. Hopefully. He knows what we do now. He understands the system. And actually, in his retirement, it suits him. He's okay. But back when he was a, a full working major craftsman, 60 prints, he would actually, he would have turned down jobs like that. Because you spend, you get paid by the piece, but when the count is low, the ratio of time that you spend mixing pigments and washing brushes and preparing, that's sort of a fixed cost. It's like renting a shop. Your fixed cost is your rent. And for him, mixing the 12 pigments, washing the brushes at the end. This is a fixed cost and you've got to do it if you make one print or if you make a hundred print. Those are the same. So for him, when he was a full working craftsman, he doesn't want to do short runs because your fixed costs are high and your pay is low because you're getting paid by the sheet. So for him to have done 60 copies back in the old days, old days meaning when he was still, uh, before he retired, he would have laughed. And in fact, his price sheet, there's no physical piece of paper, but his price list has this. If you want to hire him, for example, for test printing, where there is no co cost per sheet, then he'll just do it on a time basis. And his basic price was 20,000 yen per day for that. He will do your job. You pay him $200 for the day. You bring your blocks and your guides, you know, what, what you want, your sample and he will do the test printing based on your uh, requirements and he charges $200 a day for it. And that's, for us, that would be cheap, 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 cheap. We don't actually use him for this, we do it ourselves. And part of the reason we do it ourselves is because we we have our own ideas about the kind of colors and stuff that we want. Kubota-san is quite traditional and if we just left it to him, the color things that would come up would be quite a traditional ukiyo-e type coloring. And we're in a different bit of a, an era and a mood here. This should have been done by the original carver. This is so dangerous, this place. There's a huge shoulder here. you want to work for us I'm sorry if you're an experienced printer that's fine if you can do this stuff we need you other than that we're covered you know we need a replacement for me and if you can replace some of my jobs let me know but whatever let me know we're using them so someone's explaining about the microscope it's a few things mostly it's my age I am now there's no way I, I can work step one was glasses Step two is this a lens over the table. And uh, I would be retired. Without these tools now, I would be retired. And there's a point where these tools are actually not really going to help me. And we're looking at maybe one, two, three years down the road. 
but for the moment that's what it is. So I was asked about the the warping. The the warping wouldn't. It's a different kind of problem. Warping on the block, of course, if it warps in, we can't print because we need a flat surface to print. This is why we are using. Well, you can't see because the light's too bright. We're using plywood core blocks these days. Absolutely. The cherry on the top is basically the same as in the old days, but we use plywood core to avoid warping, and it makes the printers work much, much, much easier. All the old blocks warp, period. Flat piece of wood, no matter how carefully it's dried, when you put water on one side, it warps. If you try and stop that by putting water on the back while you're printing, then the block, of course, hugely expands. There's no way around it. And all modern printing now here is done on plywood core. And it's it's a bit sad, actually. The, the last block preparing person, Shimano Shinto, he died in 1999. Long before he died, when I was using his service to make blocks for my poet series, he and I talked. I, I went down there chatting with him one day and I said, look, let's do it a different way. These blocks are warping like crazy. He's, uh, he's, he's just like, yeah, that's the way to do it. That's too bad. You know, you're a printer. Work around it. And I'm like, no, let's put some... Let's do this. Let's work together and let's do a plywood core block. And he would not do that. He would not even try it. So that didn't happen all the time he was alive. And he suddenly died of stomach cancer after not telling anybody he was sick. And that was it. Other people stepped in, including Matsumoto-san. And Matsumoto-san straight away started using plywood cores. Because it's common sense. Absolutely common sense. common sense for a number of reasons. The wood is much more stable and two, if you get a good piece of cherry, if you use it as a single solid block, what's called muku, muku ita here, a single piece of solid wood, then your wood will make one block back and front. But if you slice that thing into four pieces, you can make two blocks back and front from the same piece of raw material. So it's a no-brainer to use the, pl to the plywood cores. And it's unfortunate that we, it had to wait till Shimano-san died for that to happen. And the really unfortunate part is, as he died, he took with him all the knowledge about how to source and how to cure and how to prepare the wood itself. So all that's left, me and Matsumoto-san, the people are doing this, we can hack around with this. We get bits of wood and make blocks and the blocks we are making look fine. They're structurally okay, but they're made on wood that has not gone through the traditional process. And that's now gone. Gone, gone, gone. Don't want to talk about wood again. It's okay. And it's too bad. That day I talked to him, whenever it was, 25 years ago or something, you know, about doing plywood blocks. If he had said, sure, let's try that. No problem. Why not? If he had done that, the world would now, for us, the world would now be a very different place. But, uh, but he didn't, and I didn't push it at the time. Common sense. You, know, you work with the craftsman. You know? If I had known he had cancer, it would have been a different story, but he didn't let anybody know. All over the place. Once you start looking here, you can see corners that are just just coming up. You know, it's just too much here. It's no good carving a little bit, sending it upstairs for Amy San to print. Then she sends it back. No, bit more here, bit more here. That could go on all day. She can't do that. Get the block ready and start and stop and start and stop. So that's why she did the right thing. She stopped printing right away. Stopped her test printing. Brought me the block and said, "Look at this. It's my job now to do a, a search and destroy mission here." Go over this block 
and make sure I've covered everywhere that looks like it might be dangerous for her. It's literally, it's search and destroy here. And feeling most of it. I, you talk about Ayana San. She's coming this morning. Actually, she's coming. She's having another conference. I know Saturdays has become Zoom day, and Ayana San, her normal school teaching work takes her Monday to Friday until the end of March. She comes aboard with us full time in April. But at the moment, she's decided to help us out. She's coming on Saturdays when she's off school, and Cameron is Friday, so they're having a Zoom day every Saturday. Someone's asking, places to visit in Kagoshima. I've never been there. You're asking the wrong guy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any insights whatsoever. I've never been down there. Go look at the volcano. I'm sorry, I don't know. Ask the chat here. There's probably people here with lots more experience than I have. I don't know, I'm sorry. Stuck in Kagoshima. The worst, worst places to get stuck, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, the high spots are because the first carver, the carver who did this, didn't really go deep enough. It's a philosophical difference. He has his very strong idea about how deep is deep enough. I have a different idea about how deep is deep enough. And he has been proved wrong by the printer. The print, this, she tried to print it and it's blotching. He didn't go deep enough. And actually he's going to hear about it again or not. And we, he and I basically resolved this issue. The recent blocks we get from him are properly carved because he finally did come round. But my God, it took years to get him to come round. He's an incredible craftsman, superb carving skills. And I, I'm not trying to diss the guy. This is Chon San who came from Hong Kong to work with us. Johnson and Rei Chan have transformed our business. They are now really super core people from um, in our business. He's carving glorious blocks, and Rei Chan is helping so much with background stuff. She's doing test printing. She prepared for me an all uh, a hunch deal last night. Yesterday, my job yesterday was double triple job, and pe too many people are waiting for me. Ayumi San's waiting for me for this. Kawasaki-san's waiting to get carving on the next image. And Ome what, what, uh, is waiting to do shipping. I had to check more prints. So there's a bunch of people in different parts of our business that are waiting until Dave gets his work done. And this is a huge problem for us. And there's too many places where I am a key man. So Rei-chan stepped in yesterday. And she helped out by doing the preparation of the tracing for the next work that goes down to Kawasaki-san in Kobe. And she saved my life. Saved my life here. And Kawasaki -san, instead of sitting here with nothing to do, now has work for the next couple of weeks. What other news and stuff was there? There was a little note here somewhere. I've lost it. No, it's not. That's yesterday's note. News I was supposed to tell you about. I don't know. There is one thing. I oh, know we did. We got the second play button box. I oh, know we got the second play button from YouTube. So there's the opening about that one. I oh, know the Thursday is the only days when all four girls are here. So a few days ago on Thursday upstairs we did. We set up the camera. And they had a little opening. We opened the YouTube play button, the one that says uh, the Mokohankan team. And they did uh, open it. So we will see. I took a video clip of that and we'll see that later on. I don't have it today. Not today. But I did, I did uh, prepare a clip. 
someone says my work is out of the frame. Has it been wandering? Just a sec. Let me try and find the spot here. Right now that's under. I'll try. Yell louder. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Yell louder. Okay, we might have this. Let's have a look. Oh no, another one over here. The other side, same thing. Woo, 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 woo. Same thing on this side. Hang on a second. You know, you come over an area, you look at it from a different angle and it looks different. You know, I came by this already, it looked okay, but now when I feel it, there's a big bump here. You have to keep rotating and rotating and get into light different ways. Yeah, absolutely, this, this whole thing. Dave, is that enough on this one? I don't know. I don't know, you know. Spending too much time on these is totally a waste. You gotta find all the spots that are going to cause trouble. If I miss one, it starts coming up and she's gotta bring a wet block downstairs. I gotta fix it while she's printing. She goes back upstairs. It's endless trouble. I had this myself in my own life. I did that poet series. You know, I didn't really know what I was doing when I started it. So I stumbled into it and got moving and went ahead, you know. And the, the question of block depth, I didn't know what I was doing. So I just carved and tried to print. And when there was marks, I tried to carve a bit deeper and tried to print. And I made very, very few copies of the prints in the early days. It was, you know, just some few dozen of each one. Then about halfway through the Poets series, publicity exploded and we got lots of collectors. I had ended up with a hundred collectors halfway through. So for those people who hadn't received the earlier ones, I had to go back, bring up my earlier blocks and start reprinting them. And I had this problem in spades. Every old block set that I brought out, old meaning something that I had carved two or three years ago, they were too shallow. And I learned bit by bit through bitter experience of recutting my own blocks like this. So I've been here before. The work I'm doing here today, I've been here and done this hundreds, literally hundreds of times with my own blocks. Blocks that I carved before I knew enough about this to carve them properly in the first place. 
I hadn't carved them shallowly because I was thinking I want to be a, a meiji or a carver. I had carved them shallowly because I just didn't know any better. So yeah, we've had this expression, been there, done that. I have been here and done this a bajillion times before. So how does a caption piece of software handle the expression a bajillion times before? How did that get translated? I don't know. Again, if I did a quick test print on this now, it would show okay, because the problem doesn't come with a quick test print. The problem comes as you repeat the print, as you get water on this, as it starts to swell. So if I printed this once right now, pigment, 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 piece of paper, bang, it will look fine. I know her first sheet, as you saw, just some very, very faint spots here and there. The stuff doesn't show until you've been printing for a while. So what I'm doing here is I'm using my experience thinking, okay, that's probably all right, but if we go 60 copies, that will come up, you know. So I'm sorry. I guess it could be measured. We could have a laser going across this thing to show me you know, X nanometers high and stuff like this, I suppose. <laughs> I'm right there. Look at that. Oh, I can see that. Look at this. Absolutely, that's going to be trouble. Is a bit inside here a bit dangerous too. Speaking again, two of those earlier days when I was doing this, you know, before I really felt comfortable about this job and before I knew what I was doing. Oh, my young son is here. Hoi, hoi, hoi. Put it, took me to the Here it is, here it Now I got a problem because it's going to fog up the lenses here. Let's see. So, what is it? 10 o'clock appointment with Cameron? Ten ten o'clock? Ten o'clock, I guess. Yeah, you don't know. Okay. Okay. So how did the session go last week? Learned lots of stuff or productive? Um, I guess so. We went over some of the stuff that I already learned from you, mm. but still it was like helpful. Mm. Plus how uh, I learned about post office stuff. Uh, yeah, that thing, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think we may be okay on this block here. <laughs> Come, 
What's the... Has the captioning turning my words into something else? I said fog up. The, the mask is making my glasses fog up. And I think <laughs> captioning is changing this to something else. I don't, I don't know. So I will never see these actually, I guess. When I, if I go to Twitch later and play back the Twitch on the VOD, will I see these captions or not? Or is this just something that happens live? I don't know. No idea. No idea. At Google, hey, wait, actually, that's in. I saw that in the settings. There's the sec settings for the caption settings here, and it says there is a profanity filter, and at the moment it's turned off. I didn't really think I needed to set the profanity profanity filter, so it's in there. Should I turn the profanity filter on? It's <laughs> the setting is here. It's a pull down menu. It says profanity filter off. And when you pull the click, it says profanity filter on unreliable. <laughs> it says itself, it says unreliable. <laughs> Whatever, I'll, I'll click it on. My lenses tend to fog, fog, fog up. If my, how do I get the fog off my lenses? I don't know. <laughs> it's a special cleaning call. No, we've got a new, I know, somebody asked me yesterday, can we put captions on these streams? Uh, uh, uh. And I googled a bit, and Twitch has a facility, Twitch themselves do this, uh. with people standing in, in the room it there typing. And typing. So, so, so I wrote back and said, no, 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 not possible. <laughs> and somebody else said, no, there's a, there's a, a plug-in for this uh, that uh, uh. talks to the Google API. So we have, uh, we've put it in here. <laughs> Is it working? Is it working? I can't see it. They, they tell me it's working at the oh, other end. They can turn it off or on. So, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it learns too. I know this is, as we said, it. Is this is sending out to Google, and maybe it's watching our stream or, or keeping track of this thing, and maybe it's learning as it's going. I have no idea. No idea. No idea. My mom is here. Good morning, mom. How you doing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the other thing is, so it's my voice. When Ayana-san comes closer, if she starts speaking, can we test this, please? Can you come back closer? Uh, oh, the, okay. the microphone. The things that I'm saying here are mm. turned in, turning into closed captions. Uh -huh. It comes on the screen. I can't see it. You can't can you see it. can you test? Can you speak something? Uh, in Japanese, in English. No, 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 English, English, English. English. Eh, what Introduce you yourself. Hello, my name is... Uh, hello, my name is Ayano. I ate scone, I ate toast, I ate, I had coffee <laughs> this morning. <laughs> I usually have two breakfasts in the morning. I'm still hungry. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is it Some, working? To, to, I guess it somebody says this can be in Japanese. Nihongo demo daijoubu desu ka? Nihongo demo daijoubu desu ka? Nihongo demo... Eh, oh, no, is the Japanese coming out in Japanese? No, someone says it's not doing Japanese. There might be a setting. Hang on a sec. Let me have a look. I'm supposed to be working. Oh, there is a language setting. Okay, just a sec. Just a sec. Okay, okay, okay. Let's, that's just for fun here. I'm supposed to be working. English, United Kingdom. Let's scroll down here. Look, at, do they have Japanese? They have Czech, Danish, Indonesian, Malay, Bengali, Javanese. There's no... In the J, there's only Japanese. Look at this. Eh, no Japanese. I'm just, I'm just, re oh, here, just way down at the bottom. Look at this, right at the very bottom, it says Japanese. This language does not support caption output to streams and recordings. Nihongo wa muri mitai. Nihongo wa muzukashi desu ka ne? Muzukashi sugiru? Sore mi na Twitch o tsukawanai ka na? No, it says, it, when I said to Japanese, it says, this language does not support caption output to streams and recordings. So let's, let's put this back. Let's put this back. But for English, I can choose Australia, Canada, Kenya, New Zealand, Nigeria. <laughs> I'm Canadian, so let's choose English, Canada. English, Canada. Hi. Hi. English with Japanese accent to a I have no idea. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, okay, let's do a bit more work. You know, we do have a show and tell. You know, as I said, it's 9.05 right now. Let's do a bit of work. Because you know, Ayumi-san, she brought me this block. She had tested the black block, and she knew there were going to be problems. And I think now, going over this, I think I have caught most of the places. Actually, before I send it back up to her, I will go over it again this afternoon. She's off now for the weekend. She's not coming back till Monday. So before I give it back to her on Monday, I will go through once more. But she also said, Dave, also, please have a look at the back. Because we have the same problem in a few places on the back. And yeah, look at this. Here's our evidence of this. See these marks? This is an angry printer. These are the marks left by an angry printer. <laughs> so, so let's do a bit of the same on the red one here. Someone's saying, yeah, this is interesting. When I was setting this up, this thing this morning, there it allows contractions. You can have set it so that when you say A, it will type B. And just to test this, I said, if I put in the words show and tell, please contract it to S and T. So if you can think of some other things here that should be uh, that should be contracted, let me know and I can set them up in the background here. <laughs> so so <laughs> like for example, we could say if it could recognize the word John and it could change it to something else. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> How do we turn captioning on? It's a plug-in, sir. And I'll, I'll, I'll put the link in one more time. If you go to GitHub, there's a plug-in for this, and you need OBS level 27 or more, 27 dot something or more. Here is the link over at GitHub. It's easy to install. You just download the plugin. It's got a, uh, what you call it, it's a .so extension, and you put it in the plugins folder in your OBS, and then just start OBS, and it just works. There's a page of settings, and for the viewer, I have no idea what to do. You can get advice from the chat here, but from the streamer's point of view, download the plugin, drop it in, and play. And this looks like something. If it's going to be successful, we should throw some money over there. Uh, I didn't. I didn't even look. Is it a free plugin or is it a is it a test or something? I didn't even look yet. But if this is working, let me know, and we will go over there and make sure that whoever wrote this thing gets uh, gets compensated for this. I also saw too in the middle of the settings. There's a setting to turn on. I didn't turn it on. It will give a transcript. It will keep everything that we've said here, split it by lines, and downloadable transcript later. Yeah, show and tell. Okay, okay, okay. Oh my god, too many things here, too many things. Let me just do a bit of work on this one then. I can see. We'll work in the area that he, he got upset about. There's so many places that are too shallow here. I'm really disappointed that we that we sent this to the printer. Really disappointed. Oh my God! Look at this. This is unbearable. I'm trying to get at the angle where you can see it. I know. The shoulder here is just too high. It's inevitable that the printer's baron will roll over that shoulder. Inevitable. I can. She's she's gone to the back room there. I can take this off. Oh, no, 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 no. I know, I understand. I know if you're thinking about work and stuff yet yeah, before before Cameron, the major, major job we have to do today, we have to get an Australia box out of here on Monday. You did some prep for the previous one last weekend. Yeah, yeah. More stuff arrived yesterday. Okay. So I think it's dumped into the Australia box or the big box right in front of you here. It just came from Oma yesterday. Ooh. There's a bunch of Australia stuff mixed in there. So this is priority number one today. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I got to be at the post office nine o'clock in the morning, Monday morning. That's got to get out of here. So. All right. And it's done. So 
customer name, customer number. Yeah, you know the deal. You know the drill. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much. So. Okay. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, hi, hi, hi. Thank you. I should tell CC to replace Baron with Baron. Shall we try this? Let's see. There's this. There's a big setting panel here. Let's try this. Let me know the ones you think should be uh, done. Text filtering, it's called. Hi. Let's add a new text filter. And replace any B A R O N with B A R E N Baron. It's been added. I think it's that simple. This is the printer's tool. It's called a baron. Baron. <laughs> what about when we discuss the baron's baron? We have a problem. A oh, baron. None this guy. Okay, well, let's change that one as well. <laughs> we can play with this all day. Add another text replacement. Replace the word B A R R E N with the word B A R E N. I don't know if this is going to make any sense or not. This is the printer's tool. It's called a baron. And Snoopy in his doghouse, he goes after the red baron. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. What a joke. Sorry about this. Still baron. Okay. I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about this of course is that it seems that I have no way to test this because the thing actively only works when it's streaming and it also said there was a warning that flashed up when I installed it and it also said please understand the things don't work when the mic is muted and this is cool I guess it's a, a situation if I'm sitting here talking and I, something I don't want to say, if I want to talk to Ayano-san about something, I mute this thing and I tell Ayano-san that secret. These guys in the chat, they don't know what they're talking about. And I've muted the button, but the caption still puts the caption up. These guys in the chat don't know what they're talking about. So it told me, it said, when you've got your mute, if your mic is muted, captions do not appear. And I guess this is to avoid hot mic incidents or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> Welcome to the Japanese Woodpot printmaking stream, where we don't do any printmaking, we talk about software. There is a ton of printmaking coming up though, you know, once I get my block ready for that surfer, we will have month after month after month of carving. So thank you for your patience on this. The past few months have been for me a kind of a bizarre time. And the lady that you've seen come in here, Ayano-san, she is going to be really part of the, the new, you know, getting work off my desk. She can't do, you know, she's not going to be sizing and stuff like that, but, and mostly she's not going to be a David replacement. She's, of course, she's a Cameron replacement. But the idea is that with our new software, the, the, the customer service job, the job that we've been referring to as the Cameron job, isn't actually a full-time job anymore because the software we've got really handles most of the order flow. And the customer service job has become dealing with people who have problems. And it's not a full-time job anymore. So Ayana-san is going to, hopefully as she gets better at this, she's going to eat that up to a couple of hours per day. Maybe she'll do it in the morning for a couple of hours to catch the mails and then do it in the afternoon for an hour or two to catch the different time zone mails. And then she is free to work with me doing other projects. And hopefully she is going to take a huge amount of the work off my back. Hopefully. We'll see. Okay. 
Time for show and tell. The other question, training my replacement for the physical printmaking job, you know, we've crossed already the number one barrier. When I started this years ago, the number one thought was, Dave, how can you train carvers and printers to replace you? It's never going to happen. And that's been done. The problem now simply is we haven't tried to train people for the other jobs that I do in the flow. The sizing, the preparing the hunch, the checking the prints, pulling the chili, deciding who gets what job. We haven't trained anybody else for that stuff. And that, I think, should be easy compared to the big job of finding carvers and printers. Okay, anyway, enough already. Show and tell. Okay, before we look at today's show and tell, which is in this red envelope, one quick recap of something we saw in the last show and tell. We opened this old Taisho era magazine and in here were a couple of sample woodblock prints and we saw one, we saw quickly a picture of a print that had a lady and her child. And there's cherry blossoms at the top and funnily enough we opened this on Thursday which was girls day here in Japan. It's like Hina Matsuri. And what we're looking at, it turned out I had a golden chance to do this and I flubbed it. What we're looking at, these are kazari mono. It's their decorative objects for the doll festival in Japan. It's not a thick magazine, it's a bound together bunch of different magazines. What we're looking at is this. You've all seen, I don't have a real picture of it, you know the, the thing they have in Japan a doll festival day where in all the houses in the old days they had a little staircase with red velvet cloth and little miniature dolls on it. It turns out that one of the popular parts of this at the back it was very common to have a bunch of these different displayed items. Do some of these look familiar? And that's exactly what this lady is holding. She is holding a display stand that is part of the doll festival. <clears throat> and these are different objects that are standard parts of the packaging of the display stand for a doll festival. It's an okazarimono, this displayable stuff, things to display. And the, the staff member, this is Asada Sat, who is here with us a couple of days a week. She does print packing. I had asked her about this after the stream and she didn't know but she went to the library, hunted up what it was, and came back and said, okay, here, 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 I found it, I found it, I found it. <laughs> so we can tell. So that's what it is. It makes perfect sense. This is a woman. It's springtime. Cherry blossoms are here. They're preparing for the doll festival. And we opened this on doll festival day, and I was too deadwood to know and understand about this. Okay, let's move on. Let's move on. Boys Day is not yet. Boys Day is a couple of months. It's 3, 3, and 5, 5. Girls Day, well, what's now would Girls Day would be 3, 3. Okay. First, the bad news. There's no opening. This had to be opened. This came weeks ago. The shipper from Yahoo Auctions sent it to the wrong place. He sent it to the billing address, not the shipping address. So this went to our Ome workshop. Ome, of course, opened it and said, what's this? I said, no problem, just send it over to me in Asakusa, we will take care of it here. So this is something that's already been opened. And we're going back in time again to Meiji Taisho time, and we're going to look at more magazines. And what we have here is, what's the third character? It's Bijutsu. Dave, remember what this is. Bijutsu, Bijutsu. It's a magazine published from Meiji, Meiji 29. I did a tiny bit of research on here. They started publishing this in Meiji 29 and it ran until Meiji 39, about 10 years. Kai, 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 Bijutsu Kai, the sea of arts. Bijutsu are arts in the sense of a painting, sculpture, or whatever arts in the wider sense, and kai, this is umi, sea. So the magazine was Bijutsu Kai, Sea of the Arts. And it had about a 10 year run, 
and it was published by the Unsodo Company in Kyoto. And maybe it was monthly, I don't know, it could have been quarterly. My guess is quarterly, I don't know. It wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been monthly. And we have here three issues from it. And it also looks like these have been in a library at some point. And don't get on me again that I have to return this to the library. We are talking about a hundred years ago. This has been, the library would have died, the library would have sent them out. Don't, don't make trouble for me here. Dave, take these back to the library because a hundred years has passed here. Spoonful Company. Ah, is it the captions? Unsodo. U-N-S-O-D-O. -O, Unsodo. Let's grab one of these and have a look. Maybe we'll look at all three today. Maybe we'll save them for later. Let's have a look. This is issue number 18. And what you're about to see, Unsodo was a woodblock print publishing company. And they published magazines and individual prints. They did Tokaido reproductions, you name it. And everything you're about to see, even though it's not directly related to woodblock prints, is a woodblock print. <clears throat> so what's the date of this? As I said, it's issue number 18, and the magazine started in 1896. Let's skip to the back page. There is no date. There's no date. But anyway, if it started in 1896, we're looking at around, around that time. And here we are. Illustrations of art objects done in woodblock print and then bound into book form. And I'm surprised there's no explanation. Hang on a sec here. No, look at this. It's just pictures with no text. I expected to find a text part here explaining the provenance of the individual objects we're looking at. We have sparklies. What's the deal? Have they tried to make the birds fly past the vase? What's going on here? Oh, I see. No, it's misregistration. It's misregistered. The aluminum block is misregistered. Good. Oh. Ah, domo, arigatou gozaimasu. Ah, domo, how are you? Hi, domo. Yeah, hi, 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 hi. Hi, arigatou gozaimasu. More work. It's prints to check. Prints to check. Prints from our printers. Prints to check. My God, I'll never get through them all. So this is a major misregistration, and I can guess why. Remember, this is a double page. This is printed with whatever is on the back of it. Well, this also has sparklies. Oops, get it on camera, why don't you? This one also has sparklies. And yeah, it's misregistered. It's, it's, there's two kinds of birds. There's dark birds and there's silver birds. And the silver birds have simply, they're misregistered. Whatever, it's a cheap magazine. And what are we looking at? There are no captions or explanations. So I don't know. You tell me. What is the object we are looking at here? It's ceramic, I guess. Would it be an inkwell? It could be one of those things with a cover. You lift the cover off and it's an incense burner. That would be my first rough guess, an incense burner. But I don't know. Well, Unsoda was famous for publishing books that were of interest to designers. They just published books that were just full of design. They would hire some guy, do me 20 pages and just draw and picture and do what you want. And it would go out to people. And people who were working in, in weaving or lacquerware or art of any kind, they read the Unsoda books as, as design manuals or design and all, just samples of design. 
there must be books now if you go to a bookstore a normal bookstore and look for the design section there must be I think similar books just design ideas so the specific object are we looking at is this for example is this one of those temari balls with woven I don't know I really don't know Maybe even somebody who was making Japanese confectionery would look at a book like this and pick up ideas for his confectionery. This is the, I guess it's a tree to show. It's a sea with plovers, a standard image of what's called chidori, the bird called a chidori. I think this is a tree, <clears throat> and this to me looks very much like, is it Art Nouveau? This looks very much like that, but this is 1890-something. Is somebody worried because I'm touching this? I mean, please don't be aware. We're, we're, we know what we're doing here. We make woodblock prints. We've been handling prints here for 40 years. We know what's safe to touch and what's not safe to touch. There's no problem with me looking at this book. This is a magazine that was sold to consumers. People would go to a bookshop and buy it. They take it home, turn the pages, turn the pages. They put something on, they, they draw, they look at it. It's just a magazine. This is not something spectacularly rare. You can buy these any day of the week in the bookshops downtown. I paid about 6,000 yen for this. And I'm not abusing it. I'm turning the pages, looking at it normally. We are not damaging it at all. Okay, gang, here's one for you. This is a new one for me. What is this? What is this? No idea. Absolutely no idea. I think we're looking at fabric, something that's intended to be fabric. It maybe has folds. I have no idea what we're looking at, what this is intended to be. 1896. Whatever, I will discuss it with people here who know more than I. We will get back to you on this one. No idea. There is some glimpse of a standard type pattern here. I don't know what we're seeing. Very interesting. Abstract art from 1895. I don't know. somebody who does have good knowledge of Japanese designs would, would sort of recognize and understand everything that he's seeing here. Myself, I'm not in any way an expert on this. I can just see glimpses of this. This one here with the three leaves, this looks similar to me to the hollyhock design that was the center of the Mon, the family crest of the Tokugawa family. I think that's not what this is because this has been adapted and changed. But you can see elements that come back in different places. And someone knowledgeable about these things, knowledgeable about Japanese design elements or Japanese traditional crests, he can see a book like this. He and she can see a book like this and they will understand everything they're seeing. Because none of this is random. There are names for all of this. this. This background pattern that we see here, this is traditional. It has a name. It was used all the time. This ring with whatever they are, this harkens right back to that you know, thunder god, the ring of drums that he has. Everything is intertwined and things just come back again and again and again. And I'm a, uh, my knowledge of this stuff is just nothing but a glimmer. I'm a, I'm a technician. We make woodblock prints. 
So I'm not in any way a person that would understand most of what I'm seeing. I can just grab little bits and pieces of it. This one, for example, this, I don't know what it's called. These days when we make mochi in the community center at New Year's time, there's a, a hammer with a big heavy head. In the old days, the tool for making mochi was a double-ended hammer. And this is the same shape as this. It went down, pounding, pounding, pounding to make the rice. Lots of these are labeled. This is labeled with uh, September, Kugatsu. This is Shichigatsu 7. This is Sano Jugatsu, October. Another one here. This is a Heian era courtier's hat. Well, someone says this, depressing yourself, a pro doesn't know. This is not my field. I'm not confessing you something here. I'm a woodblock carver. But as part of our interest in woodblock prints, in these show and tells, we've been looking at a lot of old woodblock prints or kabuki prints like we showed the other day. You need to be an expert in each of those fields, you know. So I'm not, I'm not. My interest is in the physical product and the book and how it's made and how we would carve and print. A couple of pages left. Let's get to the end of this. This one I do recognize because this is here in Asakusa. These are fishing nets. The kind of fishing net the guy would probably throw the net into the sea and pull part of it and the net pulls up the fish inside it. And this is the standard graphic depiction of a fishing net. And here in Asakusa we have the Sanja Matsuri, the three shrine festival. It's been postponed for uh, because of the pandemic. But this is their symbol. They use a symbol like this of these three fishing nets. So this one for me, this, this comes close to home right here. This is what we see in Asakusa. We're going for the bling again on this one. Again, this is aluminum powder. It is not silver. If they had used silver, it would have been black by now. This is aluminum. And you can perhaps see, maybe this is a good place to show. Here's how it works. What we're looking at, these two sheets together are one woodblock print. If you imagine this thing being opened up, so one piece of wood will do this image and this image. And it's a bit curious for people. Sometimes you would think one piece of wood will do one picture left and right. No, one piece of wood does one sheet of paper. This has been folded in the middle. And I can see what they've done because this one uses aluminum powder and this one uses aluminum powder. So they've put them both onto the same piece of wood. And then of course after the print is made, there's no printing on the back side of the sheet. We're printing on one side of the paper only. The back side, we can look through, but there's no image on the back side. It's just the back of the woodblock print. They are then folded backwards. And of course, once they're all finished, sewn together with this. So it's your standard method of uh, making Japanese print books. And everything you've seen, the front cover, the back cover, everything inside is all done with the woodblock print technique. This, I think, is a tokuri, I guess. I don't know. Design ideas from the turn of the previous century, 1890s. There we go. It looks like an idea for making wallpaper pattern to show. This would repeat if you put this in again and again and again. And here's our kanji. Un so do. They are still in existence, the company. They're still in Teramachi. And in fact, there's their address. 
京都city teramachi ni they're still there they're still in business i've bought prints from them times in the past they're a shell of what they used to be their block storage is famous every now and then nhk does a program about this sort of thing and they go into unsoto's block storage and we see it and it's like an aircraft hangar shelves and shelves and it goes off into the distance it's like you're looking in some kind of uh, raiders of the lost ark movie and there are rows and rows and rows of wooden shelves and blocks these guys have been in business since like whatever 1860 or something and they have kept all their wood blocks I mean, the blocks for this book this magazine are probably still in the unsodo warehouse it's absolutely insane it's a, it's a global treasure. It should be one of these things recognized by the United Nations or something like this. But their business now, there's a shell. The people that run it have no, whatever, whatever. But the kind of history they've got, they should be a global powerhouse in making new, innovative. They should be doing design books now in woodblock. Not happening. Not happening. Anyway, there we have it. Today's Saturday. I'll be back here two days from now. I'm not sure what work I'll be doing. I've got embossing to do. I've got more block fixing to do. I don't know. We'll be doing something next Monday. Thanks again for the mods for helping out with this today. <laughs> and thanks for the suggestion about the captions. And I will read the chat later on to find and learn what I have missed as we come along. Let's go outside. Another, another beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Tokyo day. Who's coming? I hear footsteps. Ishikawa-san's coming from upstairs. Ho, 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 ho. Trouble, trouble. Get a sign off. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye for now. Oh, what's this? People coming. Look at this. Interesting people. Here she comes. Ishikawa-san's coming. I got a sign off. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.